Okay, today we're going to look at sex linkage, and this is relevant to both the GCSE Biology and GCSE Double Award Science specifications. And in your genetics booklet of notes, uh, we're starting at page 15. That's both for GCSE Biology and also for Double Award. So earlier, uh, we looked at these karyotypes, uh, which are photographs of chromosomes and we learnt that it's the 23rd pair, so here we've got 21, 22, this would be the 23rd pair, in each case, determine whether someone is male or female. And we learnt that um, in this case, we've over on the right hand side, we've got two large chromosomes, so they're two X chromosomes, and that makes that person female, whereas a male has one large X chromosome, and we call the other small one the Y chromosome, and that makes them male. And look at this photograph here. You should be able to work out if you look at the 23rd or the last pair, two large chromosomes, so again, two Xs, and that makes that person female. Now, whenever uh, chromosomes are viewed, um, they're just about to divide and so actually that's like the original chromosome and then this over here is the copy and obviously for the y chromosome it would look something similar so we've got the original chromosome and the copy this is the photograph with the x on the left and the tiny y chromosome on the right if we go to page 15 in your notes we can see that this diagram is really showing just one of those chromosomes because whenever the, the cell divides, that one will go to one daughter cell and that one will go to the other. If we look at the X chromosome, the X chromosome has roughly 1,500 genes on it. Y chromosome has roughly 78. So what we're saying is that an X chromosome has an awful lot more genes on it than this bit here that's missing from the Y chromosome. Now, um, one of those genes that is found in the top bit uh, is the gene for color vision. Now, if we look at color, but if we think of this, this diagram over on the right hand side, we can see that an X chromosome has got color vision gene whereas the Y chromosome is missing it. So a male, as we've got over here, has only got one allele for color vision, whilst a female, because she's got two X chromosomes, she will have two alleles for color vision. Now, the color vision allele, the normal one is dominant, and that means that the recessive allele is recessive. And they know that because they found out that to, to have colour blindness, you need to have two copies of it, or else if you're a female, you need to have two copies, or if you're a male, you only need to have one copy um, because there's nothing on the Y chromosome. So it's only expressed if no, no normal colour vision alleles are present. Now, one of my cousin's daughters is... Um, colorblind and she's female but that's really unusual for a female to be colorblind she would need to have two X chromosomes and each one of them would need to have the colorblindness allele I have a lot of cousins and uncles who are colorblind that are are male and um, they only need to have one like this arrangement here if that's the colorblind allele they're going to be colorblind now if we look we're going to skip down this next bit to the table and you're going to fill this in. So we've got, if we let capital A on the X represent the colour vision allele, in other words, normal vision, and the small A represent the colour blindness allele, we can work out that this person at the top here, well, is female because she's got two X's. And she has two capital A's, so she's normal for colour vision. We're not going to write it all. I'm just going to write normal female. What I want you to do is take a minute and just fill in 
the phenotype, including the sex, so whether she's normal or whether she's colorblind, and whether he's normal or colorblind. So take a minute to, to do that. Okay, if you haven't finished, you can pause the video, but hopefully you've your vision. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these um, tests, but if you've got normal color vision, you should see the number 74. Some people might see the number 21 if they've got certain types of color vision. Some people might not see any number at all. Worked out. Here, we're also gonna, there's another test. Um, and I'm going to put you, I give you a few links and you can try some of these out. It does depend on how good your screen is as well. Sometimes um, when I show these in school, people struggle to see them, but sometimes it's because the, the screen or the device they're looking at, maybe the data projector is not very good, but you should be able to spot some numbers there. Let me see. Um, on the left, so over here, we've got a photograph of a red apple and then a green apple on the right. This is how someone would view these two apples if they had red, green color blindness. So a couple of my uncles, you know, cannot see the difference between a red apple and a green apple. And you can see why, because the red one looks like that to them. And this is what you've got here. So as we said there, top one, normal female. The second one has two X's, so she's female. And again, she has the capital A, so she's normal. The next one is female because she's got two X's, but she's got two of these color blindness alleles, so she's gonna be a color blind female. The next one is male, so the next two are male. Capital A, so he's normal, small a, color blind. Now, this female here is normal. That's her phenotype. Uh, because she's got a capital A, but she also has the information for color blindness and she could pass that on to her offspring and she could give birth to colorblind female or colorblind male. And so we say that she is a carrier. So we're just going to add that in there. It's not really our phenotype, but it's just really extra information. A carrier is someone who doesn't express the condition. So she's not colorblind, but she could pass it on because she has that allele present. So a female could be a carrier. Could a male be a carrier? Well, no. If he has a small a, he is colorblind. He can't be a carrier because he only has one X chromosome. So back up here, we're talking about carriers. Can a male be a carrier? No. So let's do the, the question underneath here. It asks us to complete the Punnett square to show the results of a cross between a carrier female and a normal male. So a carrier female, we have to put X's in here and we have to put a Y in there. Be careful that you draw a Y to make it different, that you're, you know, you're nice and neat. She's a carrier, so she has one big A and one small A. He is a normal male, he's got one big A. So what you need to do, fill in his gametes, her gametes, do the cross, and then work out the ratios, or the, sorry, the probabilities, not ratios, the probabilities, so it's fractions. Okay, gonna give you a minute to do that. Okay, if you haven't finished that, pause the video. But if you have finished it, let's go on. So this is what you should have got. So just have a little look there to check whether or not you're right. The phenotypic probabilities, normal females. Well, there's a normal female and there's a normal female. So that's two out of four, which we simplify to write a half. So that's your answer there. 
colorblind females, there aren't any. Whoops, so that's zero. Normal males, there's one, so that's a quarter, one out of four. Colorblind male, that's a quarter as well. So the probabilities are a half, zero, a quarter, and a quarter. Okay, now let's look at some of the information about color blindness. So we looked at uh, one of these, um, one of, another cousin on the other side of the family. Her husband is color blind, and you know, as you can see, that's a problem. You you have to then look and see. They can't tell any difference between the, the traffic lights, so they go by whether it's the top one or the bottom one. So you know if it's the top one that's lit, they have to stop. If it's the bottom one that's lit, they can go. That was okay. My cousin and her husband were, were driving down south somewhere and there were there was roadworks and they had like uh, temporary traffic lights. And unfortunately, temporary traffic light had gone upside, had fallen upside down. And so whenever... I say they'd fallen upside down and I'm just trying to turn this upside down it's not working here hold on you can see when he looked at the red traffic light when it was upside down he started driving and my cousin nearly freaked out but you can see it was an easy mistake to him those two look the same he didn't know it was red he just saw it was the third one down so he started going not ideal and uh, in the headlines recently, there have been a few problems in the uh, English football leagues because, for example, Man United and Liverpool a couple of weeks ago, one playing in red, one playing in, in black, people with colour blindness couldn't actually tell the difference and just turned off. And you can see here, got a lot of multi multicoloured tops at the top there. At the bottom there, you can see that, you know, there's no difference in those two, really. And the same over here, yeah, black and dark red. Somebody who's colorblind cannot tell the difference. Another sex-linked condition is haemophilia. Haemophilia is a disease where um, if someone starts bleeding, they don't have the right clotting factors, and so they'll just keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Now, um, Treatment is pretty good. They will get clotting factors added to their blood and the, uh, they just need to be really careful about the, even going to the dentist and things like that. It's a very serious disease. It is sex link though. It's inherited. And if we look at the information on page 16, well, it tells us that it's recessive. So it's inherited in the same way as color blindness. It's carried on the X chromosome. Um, we are all normal, so we have all got this X with a capital H for the normal allele. Um, but there is a recessive allele which gives hem hemophilia, and so we write X with a small H. So you're going to take a few seconds just to fill this in. And notice that this time I've actually included the term carrier. So if you can fill that in yourself, and then we'll check that you've got it right. Okay, so the normal female is, that's gonna be one example of a normal female. This is also a normal female, but as we said, she's a carrier. The other female that you could have would be two small H's on the X's and that would make her haemophiliac. Only two possibilities for the male because he only has one X chromosome. So normal has capital H, haemophiliac, small H. So if we go through that, complete the Punnett square, a cross between a normal homozygous female so remember, homozygous means that both alleles are the same. So we're talking about this person here. And a haemophiliac male. That person there. Okay, so take a minute, work out the cross. Work out the probabilities at the side there.
Okay, so hopefully your Punnett Square looks like this. So hopefully your cross looks like this. And for the phenotypic probabilities, normal females, well, this is a female with big H and so is that. So there are two out of four, which simplifies to a half. Hemophiliac male, females, none. Normal males, well, there's a male with a big H and a male with a big H. So again, that's two over four, which is a half. Hemophiliacs, none. The interesting thing there is we've got a male who's a hemophiliac, but yet you can see there, he doesn't pass that on to any of his sons because he passes the Y on to make them male. He passes the hemophilia allele on to his daughters. So it depends if their mother is homozygous, big H, big H. They're not going to be um, hemophiliac. Um, if, but it could be a carrier, if their mother was big H, small H, so if this here was a small H, and that got passed on there, sorry, I make it green, and that, sorry, so she had a small H from the father, and if that was a small H from the mother, she would be hemophiliac. But the key thing is that a hemophiliac male doesn't pass on his haemophilia to his son because he passes the Y on to him. I was talking about my family and my cousins and uncles and so on. Um, there's about, as about six of them are colorblind, five of them are male and one is a female. And as I said, it's very rare to get a colorblind female and that's because a female needs to have two of the recessive alleles to be colorblind. The same is true for haemophilia. Very few females are haemophiliac because the same thing, they need to have two copies of the recessive allele to have the condition, whereas the male only needs to have one. Okay. Don't know if you recognize this photograph. It's a photograph of Queen Victoria. And Queen Victoria lived, I think she was born about 1819 and lived to 1901. And she was, until recently, the longest serving queen or king in the UK, Queen, uh, queen Elizabeth II overtook her a few years ago. But the reason why I'm looking at her, uh, this is just to put it into context. Um, this is here we've got, down at the bottom here, we've got Prince George and Charlotte and Louis. And then we've got Prince William, his father, Prince Charles. And there we've got the queen who is Prince Charles's mother. So there's the queen. There's her father and her grandfather was, so her father was King George VI. His father was King George V. His father was King Edward VII and his mother was Queen Victoria. So this is the Queen's one, two, you see, father, grandfather, great grandfather, great, great grandmother, Queen Victoria. Am I showing you that? Well, this is her family tree. So this is Queen Victoria up at the top here. I've just circled in green. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got Queen Elizabeth, Prince Charles, William and Harry and so on. Um, we're going to ignore their part of the family tree because they have no sort of examples of haemophilia. But you can see the red squares are where... Um, we've got haemophilia, uh, haemophiliac males there. Um, now, so if we just focus in on this. They have also, in their key at the bottom, they have drawn carrier females. And that's unusual, but you know that we're talking here. Oh, dear me. You think I'd be used to using this now? We are talking about 
There's a normal allele, hemophiliac allele, that's a carrier. So normally they would just be drawn all white because they're normal, but in this case, I've sort of drawn them half and half to show that they are carriers. And if we look at some of the, the, the family trees here, we can see that in Queen Victoria's direct descendants, one, and he was Prince Leopold, he was hemophiliac. So we know that he was X with a small h, Y. We know that of her grandchildren, there were quite a few, one, two, three. Yep, three boys who were hemophiliac. Great-grandchildren, one, two, there's one there they don't know, three, four, five, six, who were hemophiliac. So from her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, there's another one in that one. So that's one plus three is four, plus six is ten. Ten males who were hemophiliac. Prince Leopold at the top here, we've said he is X with small h. And the Y, he got the Y from his father, Prince Albert. So that must mean that he must have got the X with a small h from his mother, and that tells us that Queen Victoria, who didn't have any signs of haemophilia, must have had the big H there, but must have been a carrier for haemophilia. And if we look at this family tree, well, if we go down to this part here, so we've got Leopold at the top there. He passes on his X with a small h to his daughter, Okay, so she has got an X with a small h. She's got one X, presumably with a big H from her mother because she's not a haemophiliac. And she's got the other one from her father. And you can see here that she has passed on X with a big H, X with a little h. And to make him, he got the Y from his father. And so Prince Rupert there, is a haemophiliac and that's where he got he got the small h from his mother who got it from her father prince leopold and over here you could work out similar things so princess alice here they wouldn't have known what her genotype was until she gave birth to this guy fred who must, because he's haemophiliac, he's inherited the X from his mother, so small h. That means that she must have a small h, so she must be a carrier. Okay, so a lot of history there. Okay, hopefully you followed all that, but it's, I, I find it pretty interesting, and it's quite interesting to look back on pedigrees or family trees just to see how um, conditions are inherited. Bye.